Hello everybody, Frank Mondoze here on another journey, adventure. And I'm still in Austin, Texas. Usha has moved on to Asheville where she's checking out Asheville as another place to possibly move. And I'm getting ready to go to the ISTA training in Austin in a couple of days. And I'm joined here by beautiful Hope, a dear sweetheart, uh, that we met them is the uh, three, years ago. three years ago as well. Three years ago was a big year for me. Mm. And uh, we're headed, we're taking a walk. We took a walk through Capitol Hill. And now we are taking a walk towards Barton Springs here in Austin, Texas. And uh, I love Hope. Hope is a, a great example of what sovereignty in action looks like. Mm. And <laughs> so welcome to the show, Ho. Huh? Is this the first time on Spiritual Playboy? No, I, I was on here with you at the shamanic training. The shamanic um, breath, breath work in, our, in, in, in Sedona. In Sedona, Arizona. Yeah, with Venus uh, rising and Star Wall. So, yeah, to give me a bit of your opinion. You're living in Hawaii now. You bought a beautiful land there. Mm -hmm. You also, what do you do on that land? Ah, so I'm a bee guardian, that's what I like to call myself, and I'm cultivating a space that's guided by the bees, so really big into hexagons, um, I do bee sting therapy, so I treat people, uh, this woman with rheumatoid arthritis right now, sting her like 10 times a week. Wow. Um, yeah, so lots of healing through the wisdom of the bees. And you're That's also cultivating the bees and collecting honey. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a bit about uh, your relationship with the bees and how you tend oh. to them. <laughs> <laughs> I just melt a little bit when we get to talk about the bees. Yeah, I, I feel like the bees are these really sacred, high vibrational creatures. And in commercial beekeeping, they go into these hives wearing, you know, a space suit, and they just open it and start taking all the honey and the bees are like freaking out, like, what are you? So I tend to the hives not wearing any clothes. Wow. I wear a pair of shorts so I can carry my hive tool, but that's it. And um, it creates a really sacred connection with them. I'm opening the hive, which is like their body. Mm. I see the bees as little cells of this body of a hive. So when I'm there with my bare body, mm. with their bare body, there's like this really beautiful connection and co-creation. And um, I can get in the hive. I harvested six gallons of honey from one hive just the other day. Amazing. I still I got a sting in my lip. But it looks better. <laughs> it's been three days. Um, so I get stung every once in a while, but often I can get into the hive and not get a single sting. Amazing. Because they're these beautiful gifting beings. They just want to give me their love and the love from nature. They make love to all the flowers. Constantly. Constantly. That's all they do is make love all the time. And then they bring that orgasmic juicy energy into the hive. And then we get to ingest it as humans and creatures, you know, all this. So what is the importance of bees? Like, I know that there is a story of like, you know, there's artificial bees or there are GMOing bees or killing bees or whatever. What is like, and they say that bees are some of the most important biological or, or, or organic organisms, uh, organisms thank you, <laughs> uh, in the world and we're losing them and that uh, will affect the planet. What's your perspective? What, what are they actually, what's their gift and the honey and whatnot? Uh, well, they pollinate about two thirds of all the food that we eat. So that's really important. Um, there has been perceivably a collapse of bee colonies, but what I'm witnessing is that's happening in commercial beekeeping. Okay, so in commercial beekeeping, they artificially inseminate the queen, aka rape her. Okay. So they rape the queen, then they ship her off to a hive, and they keep her in a box. Because when she goes into that hive, the hive doesn't recognize her, and they try to kill her. Wow. So for two weeks, she's in this box, and then she gets released from the box and can start making babies and living the way she would live. Well, the problem with this artificial insemination is that humans decided, oh, we know the best genetics to put into the hive, right? No, that the bees know what to do. 
So the, the queens that I work with are naturally mated and I believe they have the intelligence to protect their hive. So let's say, <laughs> let's say that um, they have some sort of pest issue. The queen holds sperm in her belly for five years. She mates once in her life and holds like 40 to 50 sperms, genetics in her belly. And she decides what genetics she, or she fertilizes with. So if you have a pest, she says, oh, the German genetics, they're really good at getting rid of pests, so she'll make a bunch of German bees. Amazing. Yeah. And when you say German, are you really meaning German, or is that just an example? Well, uh, German is an example of the genetics that we genetics, have. Genetics, okay. Yeah. I'm not sure which one would be best at things, but different species of bees are good at making honey, different ones are great at pollinating, different ones make a lot of propolis. So the queen has the wisdom, but when the humans try to take the wisdom and, and say, no, we know better, that's when it all starts collapsing, right? Going back to this idea of um, serving God or serving money. Right. So when we are in service to the queen, we are in service to the godly representation of this hive, then she is in service to us. Beautiful.